If you're anything like me, you've all probably been dragged into a police station in the middle of the night and forced to submit a handwriting sample in a vial of semen to be cleared of a vandalism charge against a Ronald McDonald statue. And if you're anything like me, you probably wondered exactly why they needed the handwriting sample. What dark and hidden recesses of your mind might they be able to unlock based on nothing but your penmanship? And why did they ask you to write, hand me the keys, you fucking cocksucker? What the fuck? Well, in hopes of unraveling exactly how much they might know, we're going to put the art of graphology under the microscope as we ask, How, how bullshit, bullshit is, it? is it? So, Heath, tell us, what is graphology? Well, it's kind of like tea leaf reading, but with ink. Right, okay, so but the useless. editorial bit is supposed to come at the end. So, like, <laughs> what's the definition of graphology? All right, all right. It's the analysis of the physical characteristics of handwriting in order to determine the personality characteristics of the writer. Gotcha. Okay, so just to set a baseline here, what information can a person realistically glean from another person's signature? That would be their name. That's it? Well, not always entirely. It depends on the handwriting. You can almost always figure out the initials, I guess, you know. Well, I, I, I mean, you can at least determine stuff like gender, can't you? Well, you can make relatively accurate predictions about a person's gender, and occasionally you can pick up some vague idea of their education level, but neither of those are accurate enough to call this a science or anything close to it. So Okay, but I mean, I know about a lot of high-profile criminal cases that are ultimately decided by handwriting analysis, so are you saying that all of those cases rested on a pseudoscience? No, 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 no. What you're actually thinking about is forensic document examination. That's okay. actually a legitimate branch of forensic science in which a thorough examination of handwriting is used to determine whether a given document is a forgery. Unfortunately, a number of graphologists are also forensic document examiners, and very often they go to great lengths to conflate the two practices for some reason. Well, why would they want to conflate those two things if they were both legitimate things? They wouldn't. I see. Okay, so uh, wh where does graphology come from? Irrational people. Okay, any um, specific irrational people? Yeah, sure. Um, as near as I can tell, the earliest known work on what we now call graphology dates back to the late 16th century, and like no science that's legitimate, it really hasn't changed much in the last 440 years. Okay, I, I guess I have to be honest, I'm actually a bit surprised that this isn't based on a firmer foundation. I, I, I've just seen it presented in so many places as though it were an authentic branch of psychoanalysis. Well, the illusion of legitimacy dissolves pretty quickly when you start looking at the specific types of things graphologists say. For example? Well, they might interpret an abnormally wide space between words as an indicator of loneliness, okay. or that a... Strong final stroke betrays a person who resents being told what to do. Okay, Making now, shit up. now we're sounding like bullshit. Right. That's probably why the British Psychological Society ranks it as precisely as valid as astrology. Okay. Zero valid. Well, as, as silly as this all sounds, I guess it ranks pretty low on the like you know general societal harm scale when you compare it to the other stuff that we cover on this segment. <laughs> yeah, but... Only because we cover so many truly fucked up things on this segment. It, it's not like there are no negative consequences to the belief in graphology. They're definitely not. Okay, so, so like what, for example? Well, um, on the low end, there are plenty of examples of employers using graphology to assess the viability of job candidates. And as uncommon as that is, it probably seems damn harmful if you're the person who lost out on a job because you space your words like an antisocial hermit or whatever they made up. <laughs> Well, okay, sure, but I mean, I would imagine that's too infrequent an issue to get all that worked up about, right? That depends on where you live. It's depressingly common here in the U.S., but even more depressingly common in France and Germany, for some reason. Graphology is also used to evaluate marital compatibility, to select juries, and even to evaluate candidates for high office there. What? Oh, okay, wait a minute. Are you suggesting that people vote based on the handwriting of the candidates? Well, I doubt there's anyone who bases their vote entirely on that, but judging by the ubiquity of graphological analysis in major media outlets, way too many people believe it's a relevant factor, and way too many of them work for major media outlets, unfortunately. Okay, define major media outlet. I've seen graphological analysis of the current presidential field presented on websites like the Wall Street Journal, the Daily Beast, the New York Times, Politico, 
as though it were a legitimate science. In wow. fact, Politico recently ran the analysis of one Michelle Dresbold, who they identified as a graduate of the United States Secret Service's Advanced Document Examination Training Program, without bothering to differentiate between forensic document examination and reading chicken bones. Wow. Okay, so w what kind of insight might a gullible person gather from this analysis if they were you know, inclined to rely on bullshit? Whatever Michelle Dresbold pulls out of her ass, basically. Her fortune cookie bullshit includes the assertion that the lack of space between Ben Carson's first and last name represents a fear of abandonment. <laughs> also that Hillary's straight up and down signature is indicative of a person whose head rules their heart. What? And yeah, no idea. And my personal favorite, that the phallic nature of the P in Donald Trump's last name is an indication that he's a dick. Seriously? Seriously. Gotcha. Okay, well, that sucks. But again, I, I guess it doesn't register like compared to stuff like exorcism or chiropractic and stuff like that. That's true. But the real problem with things like graphology is that they reinforce a dubious scaffolding upon which far more harmful concepts can hang. For example, graphotherapy is a pseudoscience that purports to allow people to overcome personality deficits or psychological problems by altering their handwriting. As if that's You're not kidding the opposite. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was. But think about it. If you accept that your handwriting is indicative of your psychological state and personality, I guess it makes perfect sense to just reverse the arrow. Yeah, idiot. okay, so I guess I can see that one leading to some problems. Yeah, and even worse, many graphologists claim they can assess certain aspects of a person's medical condition through handwriting analysis. Okay, now you're sounding dangerous. Indeed. Well, it's important to note here, there actually are legitimate uses of handwriting analysis in medicine. Certain conditions like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's actually do affect a person's fine motor function, and telltale signs of that will show up in a person's signature. So... Real doctors might actually want to see a handwriting sample for a, a real diagnostic purpose. Gotcha. Sometimes. Okay. However, that fact gives graphologists yet another opportunity to conflate their pseudoscience with a legitimate one. For example, Dr. Oz's website lists a number of medical maladies that they claim can be diagnosed through handwriting. Included in the list are legitimate things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, like I said, right alongside insane and dangerous shit like... Schizophrenia, pregnancy, depression, cancer, and suicidal tendencies. Holy shit. Okay, so people are going to graphologists to find out if they have cancer? If they're listening to Dr. Oz, yeah, maybe. Wow. Well, I, I guess the only thing left to do is sum it all up with a poop joke. So, Heath, after a thorough examination of the evidence both for and against graphology, tell us. How, how bullshit, bullshit is, is it? it? It's enough bullshit for Donald Trump to get elected president of Mexico. That's a lot of bullshit. While getting shit on by many bulls. That, that would explain the hair. <laughs>